It feels like you need a PhD to build web apps these days. Tons of frameworks, state managers, components, bundlers, compilers, or hydration strategies are just a few of the many things that you need to keep track of. Oh god, kill me now! So let's switch it up a bit, get back to the basics, and figure out if we can build a modern web app by working smarter, not harder. In this video, we'll mix together the two things I'm best at. Avoid working too much and wasting time and money in the stock market. We'll build a small app that allows us to search for various stocks and their prices using HTMX on the front end, Go Fiber on the back end, and Uno CSS to make everything pretty. Simplicity is the word that best describes this stack. The Go language is famous for its power and ease of use, and Fiber builds on top of that by providing a performant web framework with an express inspired dev experience. HTMX takes an interesting approach to building UIs by giving developers access to AJAX, CSS transitions, web sockets and server sent events directly in HTML. In other words, with HTMX, you can build modern web interfaces without writing a single line of JavaScript. Finally, we'll need to style our app, and we can do this with Uno CSS, an instant, on-demand atomic CSS engine which allows you to use predefined utility classes instead of writing your own CSS. So, as you can see, the theme of this video is building apps by writing as little code as possible. Before moving forward, let's quickly review the architecture of this tech stack. Everything will be held together by the Go Fiber web framework. Whenever a user will make a request to access our app, the Go server will intercept that request and will perform various business logic actions. Then, it will compute the HTML on the server and send it to the client, which will render the page instantly. One small thing to keep in mind here is that the rendered HTML will actually contain HTMX markup, so whenever the HTML reaches the client, your app is almost instantly interactive with no hydration step required. I'm saying almost instantly interactive because the browser still needs to download a 14 kilobyte HTMX engine and execute the JavaScript code in order to make sense of all the special HTMX markup. So we have a server-side rendered app with an almost immediate time to interactive experience. Pretty nice. What happens though when the user starts interacting with the page? Modern UX expects that the navigation feels natural and snappy and all server communication is performed asynchronously without blocking the actual workflow. Well, this is where the HTMX magic comes into play. By using special attributes, we can enhance DOM elements and seamlessly perform a sync server requests or DOM updates. So, while users are clicking on links and buttons, AJAX calls will be sent to the server and the resulting HTML will be inserted in the DOM. Note the slight difference between this architecture and the established SPAs. SPAs will usually receive JSON back from the server and will use that JSON to update the app state, which, in turn, will re-render the DOM nodes. With HTMX, the server handles all the rendering and the resulting HTML is then simply placed directly in the DOM. Okay. Time to write some code now. We'll start by initializing a Go project and installing the Fiber dependency. Then, in a new file, we'll define a Fiber app and register a view engine pointing to the views directory. Whenever users access the root path of our app, we'll send them the computed index.html template as a response. Templates are stored under the views folder and they are very straightforward. In the header, we are downloading the HTMX engine and the Uno CSS runtime and, in the body, I'm defining a search field. This is probably a good time to take a quick detour and look at styling a bit more closely. Because the Uno CSS script is added in the page, the browser will know how to interpret these utility classes and style our HTML elements accordingly. There is a wide variety of standard and custom classes in Uno, and you can check out the link into the top right corner to get an in-depth overview of this topic. What you need to know for this video is that this is all you need to do to style your app with Uno. No build steps, no CSS rules. Just drop in the runtime and simply add the necessary classes in your markup. Ok, now let's add some interactivity to our page. Whenever the user changes our input, we can perform an AJAX GET request to the server and search for the specified ticker symbol. Of course, I don't want to bombard the server with a ton of requests, so I can use a trigger modifier to delay the server calls. When the response is received from the server, we'll use that HTML to replace the contents of the search result container. On the server, let's create a handler for the get search request fired from HTMX. We'll use the ticker parameter to perform a search, then, when the result is received, we'll render a new template called results.html. 
inside the template, I'm iterating over the list of search results and allow customers to see more details about the found stock by clicking on the details button. We'll add more interactivity to this template via HTMX in a second, but first let's quickly wrap up our backend implementation. We are getting details about various stickers from the Polygon.io service with a rather straightforward implementation. Using Go's built-in HTTP module, we can send GET requests to the third-party API and then convert the JSON response into a Go struct. Then, following the same approach, I am defining a getDailyValues function, which will return the current price for a specific stack. Again, we are doing the same steps, fetching data via the HTTP module, then unmarshalling the response body into a struct. Back to the request handlers, just like we did with search, I'm defining a new handler which will extract the ticker from a path variable, will retrieve the daily values for that ticker, and, finally, will render a simple values.html template with the daily prices associated with the stock. This gives us the chance to go back to the results.html page, where we render the search results a bit earlier and register an AJAX GET request on the button. By default, the request will be fired when the button is clicked, and the resulting HTML will fill in the stock details DOM element. So this is all the code we need to write to allow users to search for stocks and see their daily values. If the Go part of this project was not that familiar to you, don't worry. I know this is a way broader topic, deserving of more in-depth videos, and I have quite a few hands-on Go videos planned for the future. For the rest of this video, however, let's quickly review some other interesting things HTMX has to offer. You've seen its core features in action, but believe me, there is more to HTMX. On one hand, it should go without saying, there is support for all HTTP verbs when sending AJAX requests. This in itself is extremely powerful, since HTMX links and buttons are now on steroids and they are not bound to the plain old synchronous GET requests anymore. These requests are launched by triggers which are basically DOM events like change, submit or mouse entered, or more special events like load, revealed or intersect. You can control these triggers via modifiers such as once, delay or throttle. The support for server requests doesn't end here, and you can also get data from the backend using server polling via the every syntax, or even communicate with the backend via WebSockets or server events. I don't know about you, but I'm finding the simplicity and power behind such approaches pretty mind-blowing. Besides all the server communication, HTMX comes packed with a bunch of convenience features. Take for instance its seamless confirmation model integration, or the HTML5 validation API, which is enforced whenever working with forms. One other interesting avenue in this entire new approach of building front-end apps is writing scripts directly in HTML via HyperScript, so let me know in the comments if this is something you would be interested in seeing. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons, and until next time, thank you for watching. That's annoying.